Hello everyone, welcome to AI in Action, Insights from Global Repair Industry. I'm Zoe. It's wonderful to have you all with us. Let me start by introducing our distinguished panelists. Yuri, Vice President of the AI Department from Launch Overseas. Hello. Lan, General Manager of the Operations Department from Launch Headquarters. Hi, Arla. And we have our product managers from Launch Europe. They are Vladi, D, Hi. Jamshida. Hello. Mars, Deputy Sales Director from Launch Headquarters. To begin, let's take a look at the global landscape. How is AI being used in different regions today? Yuri, maybe you can kick us off from the US perspective. AI is being used in a number of different ways in the United States today. Specifically in the automotive aftermarket, it's being helped for predictive repair, for guidance on the better answers, and for ways of making it more efficient in the shop for day-to-day -day activities. It's all about how the shop can be more profitable and the technicians can gain guidance as they're learning more about more complex vehicles. Thank you, Yuri. And Vladi, what are you seeing in Europe? For you especially, I would completely agree on the terms from Yuri. But in addition, I would say that a lot of people today use AI for researching. They um, they, if they are sure about something, they will um, check it up, make sure, and get um, more information from trustable sources, for example from OE. And with the um, capabilities of AI, you can um, make the search more efficient and get um, an answer that is mostly 100% correct. Excellent point. Um, finally, Mars, could you share how things are developing in China? In fact, artificial intelligence has already become part of our daily lives. However, we don't even realize it. For example, when we watch short videos or listen to music, AI recommended contents based on our interest. So AI is not a distant future. It's happening around us every single day. Launch has established a dedicated AI team to explore its applications in the automotive aftermarket. During our over 30 years of industry experience, we are accelerating the development of our private knowledge base and have introduced an AI assistant in China to support technicians in addressing day-to-day -day repair challenges. Let's turn to adoption trends. What do you see as the biggest driving forces pushing AI forward in repair market right now? Lan, let's begin with you. The repair market has to deal with a vast array of brands and vehicle models. Well-experienced repair technicians are relatively scarce. Therefore, it's necessary to apply AI to assist the junior technicians in solving uh, car repair problems. Thank you. Dee, would you like to add your perspective? Thank you, Zoe. Yes, we are in an era of complexity of vehicles environment. We're facing much more complex vehicle situations. That's why I think AI adoption would be the best choice for us. Um, the traditional ways of dealing with vehicles are very time consuming. Technicians spend hours checking manually data analysis with errors and trials, which is a lot of time consuming. But with the help of AI, we can leverage machine learning for OEM service bulletins to real time data sets. It can help us with much better accuracy results. The second biggest demand, I would think, is the customer satisfactory. The environment is changing. Customers are expecting more from us, not only the high accuracy, but also higher speed. With the help of AI, we can leverage customer data, historical data, real-time data. We can provide better potential diagnostic solutions to them. And at the same time, we can inform customers with potential future diagnosis results 
So this helped them reduce the downtime and latency. I believe this is very great practice for binding customer relationship with us and also building a trust between us and customers. This helped us a very competitive position on the market. Of course, with opportunities also come challenges. On the other side of the coin, what do you see as the main obstacle slowing down wider adoption? Jim Shida, would you like to share your thoughts? Yeah, sure. I'll highlight a couple of uh, challenges that we are facing currently. Uh, the first one would be the inavailability of good quality data of repair industry. So right now, um, most of the workshop, they, they don't uh, keep a good track of uh, repair information. So we need to go through a curating process. We need to curate the data, uh, make the quality better with the help of a qualified technician. So that is one issue that we are facing. Then other one is with respect to ad adoption of AI by technicians. So we need to really show them that it brings value uh, to them, so we need to show okay, it reduces their repair time or improves, uh, increases their profit uh, with the help of AI. So, for that, we need to have a good model. That means, okay, since uh, data is the main input to the AI model, we should have the good quality of data coming into the AI and it gives a, a good expert suggestion to the uh, workshop technicians. So and then another challenge that uh, I can think of specific to European market would be the regulations that we have in place in Europe. So in, we have uh, regulations such as GDPR and EU AI Act uh, which uh, uh, protects the data privacy of people. So then we need to take uh, explicit consent from the user that we are using their data. We need to show them how we are using the data and also it should be transparent. They can, and they have the option to come and opt out of use, uh, um, making their data available to us. So these are the regulations that we have in place. So this makes the adoption of AI in Europe slower compared to China or USA, for example, where they don't have to go through this hurdle. So this pro we have to um, overcome this process, this stage first uh, for the adoption of AI. And also people in Europe are realizing this uh, hurdles and they are calling out for more realistic regulations from the authorities. So hopefully we can see some changes in that direction and which makes um, this easier. One recurring challenge in Europe is language diversity, which can sometimes slow down adoption. How do you think the industry can address this? would you like to start? Thank you, Zoe. Expansion to European market brings a special layer of complexity. We're dealing with more than 20 languages and regional regulations. This challenge is new, but we're very excited about it. What we're doing is not to reduce the complexity of Europe. What we need is definitely a global, single and unified platform where insights and ideas can be converted and grasped internationally, intellectually and seamlessly. Thanks, Dee. And Jamshida, what's your take? So unlike USA and China, where they have a relatively homogeneous language and regional diversity, in Europe, like Dee mentioned, we have more than 20 official languages and various different cultures. So we have to address this in our uh, uh, building our diagnostic repair agent. So we cannot uh, build a separate agent for each country because this will be very uh, exhaustive and the data required will be very high so which is not really practical for us so we need to group the countries or take Europe as a whole and have some uh, unified language to train the model on and uh, so that we have a good coverage of vehicles in that area to the same model. So here, translation becomes a key point here. So we need to have an effective translative agent uh, which understands uh, the AI automotive market, market and the repair industry and can answer using the technical words and uh, uh, like specific to the technician. So we need to build a good agent like that which covers the technical um, uh, terminologies in this area and combine it to our language model to have an efficient translation. So if we are able to achieve that, then that will be a big um, 
uh, win for us um, for a wider adoption in the of AI in EU. AI solutions in the repair market rely heavily on large amounts of vehicle and workshop data. From your perspective, how can companies keep this data secure while also protecting proprietary technologies? Lam, perhaps you can take this one. Okay, firstly, establish a multi-layered data security protection system. For instance, encrypting data during collecting, transmission, and storage, implementing stringent access strategies, setting up a regular data backup mechanism. Secondly, strengthen measures for protecting proprietary technologies, such as intellectual property protection, technology resolution and encapsulation, as well as continuous monitoring and auditing. Thirdly, we implement tracing of all data from input to output of the entire agent's agent team system. This ensures proper security and uh, protection of our companies and uh, customers or uh, partners' data to the allowed system. Firstly, ensure compliance with laws, regulations, and uh, industry standards by strictly Adhere, adhering to national laws and uh, regulations concerning data protection, model application, privacy, security, and uh, following industrial wide data security standards and uh, best uh, practices. Let's step back for a moment. On a personal level, why is it important for you to help drive AI into the industry? Mars, I'd love to hear your view. Okay, I think there are three main points. First, efficiency and productivity. As vehicles become more connected and complicated, the complexity of after-sale service will continue to grow. AI helps garage improve repair efficiency. This allows technicians to focus more on problem resolving and customer service, rather than repetitively manual processes. Second, 24-7 AI support. In many regions, especially in developed countries, the average age of technicians is now over 50. Many are less willing to learn new technologies. With AI-powered 24-7 chart and West agents, Technicians can simply talk to the scanners and get instant answers, reducing the need for extensive retraining. Third, customer satisfaction. AI enables faster diagnostics, more accurate repairs, and smarter service recommendations, which leads to higher customer satisfaction and loyalty. Ultimately, this drives sustainable revenue growth. Thanks, Mars. And Vladi, what's your perspective? So we actually want to improve the workflow of the technicians as good as possible. We want to have the best workflow for them. Um, imagine you have a car with um, some faults, you connect your device in two, and the device will tell you what's wrong with the car. It, it can tell you by the information it has through all the data that we gathered over all the years, um, what might be the cause for it. Um, with the course, it can also connect to our um, partners, our strategic partners that we have been working um, for a long time now. They can provide you good, um, good manuals, instructions, how to repair this exact fault. With uh, this instruction, um, you also can get more information like um, if a spare part is needed. So uh, our next strategic partner can provide you the spare part, tell you exact, exactly what uh, part you need. Next uh, thought would be um, the AI can order the part for you if you want to. So you can just uh, connect to the car, get uh, everything diagnosed and uh, ordered already. But then if you want to 
uh, repair the vehicle and you may forgot how some part works, we have another strategic partner for it that can uh, provide you manuals um, on uh, and refresh your mind how this part actually works. And uh, with all this information, all these partners we have, you can um, have all the full package of information that will help you in your daily business. As we come to the close of today's discussion, let's reflect on the journey so far. What has Launch learned from working with workshops around the world when it comes to bringing AI into practice? Yuri, could you share your insights to wrap this up? Absolutely. So, in the overseas markets, we have a very, very diverse customer group, right? Just sitting here at the table today, we can see that we have a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds. So working with our workshops in the 200, over 200 markets that we're in requires a lot of understanding of the things that our colleagues have brought up today. For instance, data privacy or different integration partners or different repair information providers. So Launch has been focused on how do we make sure that we focus on how diverse everything is, but ultimately our goal is to help technicians repair vehicles faster for car owners to make sure they get their cars up and running faster as well and everybody's safe on the road when they do it. So ultimately what we've learned is that you can take a unified approach to this but have to take into consideration how complex and how different each market is. We're doing that by making sure that we succeed in testing a market by looking at what a technician needs to do to generate revenue, what a shop needs to do to be more efficient, and then making sure that we test this quickly with the different components and different technologies available to us. That brings us to the end of AI in Action, insights from the global repair industry. A heartful thank you to all our panelists and for your valuable perspectives. And of course, thank you to everyone for being here. We hope today's conversation has sparked fresh ideas how AI can continue to shape the future of the repair market. Thanks again, and we look forward to carrying this dialogue forward. Bye.